So hello everyone, thank you for coming back to my channel, Promoting Safety Engineering, and the name is Toby once again. And um, this is the fourth video in the series of learning how to read PNIDs. So I hope you've been enjoying the series, and um, if you have any comments or any suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment, comment section. And also, um, this video, I'm going to go a little bit more in-depth into um, learning how to read PNIDs. You know, the first was like an overview, giving you a description, and then the third, uh, third was describing this page. But we're going to go a little bit more in-depth and kind of a bit more faster, uh, or a bit faster. So if you like the videos, please, as I say, like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. So this was where we ended the last um, the last video talking about the HP knockout vessel. This is V3020 and the choke exchanger, the E3020. So um, from here, we're going to be flowing to look at the numbers. Most times the numbers kind of follow. So this is V3020, E3020. The next is V3021 and E3021. The E is for the heat exchanger and the V is for the vessel. So this is 21 and so this is 3020 and this is V3021 and then this is V3022. So can you and then you can see in the next page you will see the E3 okay this is 3004 Yeah. But you kind of get the gist of what I'm I'm saying. So go back to, let's go back to the page where we left off last time and you know I always keep saying go back to your PFDs you get confused go back to your PFDs so we started with uh, from the wells here one two and three and then we went into the V3020 the HP knockoff vessel and the threes E3020 the heat exchanger which is what you have here and here now the from the well comes in here the liquid leg which is at the bottom that is where the liquid flows out from the water the oil goes out this way and then the gas goes out the turp and goes into the heat exchanger if you go back to the overview the same thing the gas goes into the heat exchanger, the liquid goes down into this heat exchanger and ends up in the V3021, the classifier. Now, have an, over, an overall look at what's happening. If the gas goes this way, the liquid comes this way into the, this heats up the liquid again and brings it into the V3021 classifier. When it gets into here, it's further separates into because it's been heated up here there would be some gas that would go out, go out the top again so the li mixture comes in here of liquid and gas the liquid goes out the bottom the gas goes out the top and the gas ends up in here the same kind of happens here this the gas goes out the top it gets heated up and it flows into the separator so gas comes in from here gas comes in from here so the x the gas that comes from here is just the remnant of what comes out from here the liquid because when the liquid flows out it still has some gas in it but to further separate it you heat it up so that they they they're more separated and the when it comes in here the gas will go upwards and the liquid come comes out so let's go back to our pnids note the liquid leg from the liquid um, liquid leg of the HP knockout vessel, that's the first page we were on. It goes into the heat exchanger. So I come back here. This is the liquid leg. The liquid flows out all the way to the classifier. Comes out to the classifier. So you go into the second page and that's it here. This is the two lines. One goes into the liquid leg and um, the other goes into the vessel. So go back. Most of what goes down into the liquid leg is the drains, but just come back here. Now, this is where we're going to study. 
when the liquid goes out this way look at this line number it's it doesn't change three inches pf two five eight two twelve oh fifteen if you go into the next page and this is 085 it's almost the same thing although this is 3a1 this is 25a2 when you go to the next page you would see the continuation can you see them so always remember your line numbers your line numbers can you see the 085 and can you see the 015 let me go back again so you don't miss it 015085 and that's it coming here 015085 so the what the actual flow which is the main flow which is this line the 015 is what continues into this new heat exchanger which is what we are seeing here 3021 zoom in so you can see that clearly 3021 and that's what continues into here 3021 you have um, uh, that's a, a reducer or an expander sorry it gets uh, the line gets a bit bigger than from a three inch to a four inch then you have the heat exchanger here the heat exchanger has various um, instrumentation on it but mainly it's just to increase the temperature of the liquid coming in that's and the way that happens is um, with this this is temperature indicator alarms and the temperature transmitter it knows that there's a set temperature and it allows the flow of the heat to come in so look at from hot water because you cannot heat this up with um, should I say like a real heater like a heating element or you cannot heat it with uh, like direct um, maybe electricity or fire what you want to do is because it's very flammable the gas in there you want to use hot water to heat it so this hot water has a supply coming from uh, this is page 22 that if you go down that's the hot water comes somewhere from here if you trace the line you would be able to see exactly where it comes in from this is page 22 and this is 2 inch WD 1A1 2 inch WD 1A1 mm, just take half patience you'll find it 2 inch mm, it's going to be somewhere in here so the general thing about PNI this is yeah this is it so you can see it going up from here 62 6 and you can that's why you can see it's going to page 21 that's the page above this is 62602 and uh, yeah that's it 62602 so it's the hot water from here i believe that flows outwards and goes into here to help heat this up so the um the gas comes oh sorry this is the liquid leg from this yes so it flows into the heat exchanger gets heated up passes through this valve this is a probably a shot okay it's a level it's a level in the um it's a level control valve so what that does is it controls the flow coming into this um, coming into this vessel and then of course we have a vessel I've explained vessels a couple of times but um, yeah you have your level anything L you see is for level that's level transmitter transmitting into the control room letting you know the um, the level of liquid in this vessel and then you have your temperature gauges letting you know the temperature of what's happening in here and um, you have your um, you have your shutdowns in here this is your trip this is very important in case this level the level in the vessel gets too high this is what would close would automatically shut down everything so that you're you don't have a liquid carryover into the gas line because when when this gets too full the liquid flows in here and um yeah it goes 
um, where it's not supposed to go. The liquid is supposed to come out this way and gas is supposed to go out this way. Liquid comes out from here. So the second line, remember I talked about the second line from here also, that's the drains. So that's this. So the liquid uh, is not normally going to be in here. And that's why you can see this line O85 comes into this line O85 here. And that's why it goes in. That's why this line is closed. It goes out somewhere. I believe it's the drains. Yeah, that's the drains. You can see two-inch drain header. So with this, after the mixture, that this is V3021, don't forget. After that mixture comes into this vessel, that is this. Some the gas goes out the top to the LTX separator and the liquid goes out the bottom, which is just exactly what's happening here. The liquid comes out the bottom here and flows to the um to cond the condensate flows to the surge exchanger. The surge exchanger is on page uh 22 okay that's why you see this and the gas goes out the top to uh, to the ltx so all the instrumentation you see in here don't let them get you worried or confused all you have to do is follow the what i in the first video where i explained the where I explained the um, um, the instrumentation on the vessels and the how they're named so anything you see f is for flow f is the beginning and that's for flow anything you see l is for level that's the level and you only see l's in vessels because that's when there's a the level of the liquid in the vessel anything you see t like this t temperature gauge or t here temperature transmitter temperature alarm and then anything you see, if you see a P, it's mainly for pressure. And that has to do with gas. So the instrumentation in here, most of them go to the control room unless you see a G. That's local. Level gauge, temperature gauge. That means you have to come to this vessel to actually see it. But people in the control room pick up the signals and they see the level and the the gate the level the pressure the temperature in the vessel and then from the liquid line goes out there's a um, change of uh, um, the pound the rating of the pipes changes here there's a reducer here drops the pipe um, size down to two inches and one line is closed so this um, has been you see one line is closed and this is actually the line where the flow comes out of there's a flow transmitter here measuring the flow of liquid that goes from all the way from here here so this goes into two this is a manual valve is to isolate this entire setup this is a flow transmitter measuring the flow this uh manual valve so you can actually this you see this a lot because you want to be able to remove this if there's a problem with it and change it without stopping the flow of uh, without stopping this uh, the operation of this vessel so if this were to hap happen that's why you have these two valves you would close these two valves and then open these two valves so the flow will come out this way and that's why you can see the flow transmitter has been spared so one is duty when you hear duty and standby one is duty one is on standby the standby is the one that's closed and so there's no flow into this unless they want to work in this they close this two and then they open this two and then the flow is routed this way and then you have another here so you can take out this whole setup and then the flow continues upwards you can see this is closed when you see it's blacked out all the way blacked out that means it's a closed it's normally closed and it's, you're not to operate through that and then it goes back up this way into this uh, level controller this level controller takes its readings from this level transmitter so this is what controls the level in this vessel if this sees that the level in here is too high it would tell this to open up more so that 
the, there would be more flow coming out this way and if this is too low if if the level in this is too low it will tell this to close so that it, this vessel can hold in more liquid so this talks that's why you can see this lines because it's like either a pneumatic or electronic line telling this what to do and then the flow comes out this way and you can see that this also has this too here just in case you want to work pull this out and work in it and if when you're doing that that's when you flow through this way and then you have and um, then here you have a shutdown valve meaning if you want to shut everything in here down because of the liquid this is what would just close and you wouldn't have anything going this way so this is the liquid leg going out this way this is to the drains i explained the drains the drains is um mainly for maintenance if you want to work on the vessel like um you want to do some work in here and you don't want flow coming in this way so you close off everything and you open this valve so that the extra whatever is left in the vessel drains out this way but that you can see they are all closed because during normal operation they are supposed to be closed because you don't want to have liquid uh, blowing into uh, going into the drains so that's your drain um, that's going to your drain of the surge exchanger and this is the actual liquid going out you can see they're both different this is a three inch this is a two inch this is 0 to six this is 0 to seven if we go into the next page you would uh you can see that they go into page 22 or one let me go to the next page and uh 27 26 let me look for those lines this is 22 right yeah yep yeah. You can see them here, 26, 27, from drains, from classifier, yep, from page 21, up above here, page 21. So, and then you have the gas going out the top to the LTX, which is in page 22. So, that's what's happening in here, which is, so we've finished what's going on in here with this two, and we're back to the LTX separator and this LTX, LTX um, heat exchanger. So we have flow coming from two places into here. You have from this uh, 3021 and 3020. You can see them all meeting in here. So, and this is 3022. So we go to 3022 which is page 22 and that is this so obviously you can look at your lines this is the gas line coming in and that's 108 and this is the liquid line 026 don't forget that this is the drains so gas is 108 liquid is 026 let's go gas 108 Yep, gas from gas classifier and liquid. Um, liquid was um, okay. The liquid should come from the, from the bottom. Mm, what what number did what did I call the liquid? One hundred eight and I think uh, fifty twenty six. I'm sorry, yeah, twenty six. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So the liquid line, this is going to the drains, remember, and this is the actual liquid leg. Comp flows this way, this way, and goes to the surge hex. Oh, and that's the surge heat exchanger. And then this is the gas. Remember, what is really important is our gas. So that's this has gas coming in, and this has gas coming in to the LTX separator. And then we look at our gas here. Everything comes this way. And coming from here, we come into the vessel. Same thing, there's a 
pressure safety valve on top which pops if the pressure in here is too high you have your various instrumentation pressure transmitter your pressure alarm high your pressure alarm low your trip which is high high and low low that means it's too high or it's too low remember i said before you get to a trip you want an alarm first so the alarm there's a set level where it would first alarm that it's too low and if it keeps on going lower it's gonna trip that's the low low and that's the trip here and if there's a high you'll first hear the alarm that's why the pia pressure indicator alarm and you would have your high high trip when the pressure is too high and the same thing goes for the for um for the level also you'd have your level trip okay and um you would have okay sorry this is level trips and level alarms here and uh you have your flow going all the way um the gas whatever gas is in here let me see what the get what happens to the gas this is your pressure safety valve Okay, gas from choke exchangers into, okay, the gas goes to the flare. I think I should do a video on flare systems also because that's like the, your last line of defense. That's where everything goes to um, every, when there's a process upset, that's where all the gas goes to and gets burnt out. And um, also, if you're having overpressurization and your PSVs pop up, it uh, relieves to the flare. The flare is like what keeps your whole system sane. So in case there's any pressure, um, very high pressure, you don't want to keep it bottled inside here so you don't get any explosions. So everything just goes to the flare. Okay. And then there's a liquid leg that comes out this way. So what exactly is happening here it's a bit confusing uh, let me see so some okay so what we're looking what we need here is the is the liquid coming out the bottom so that's what's really needed come back here liquid that's going all the way from here same setup flow Flow, uh, flow transmitter, a non-return valve or a check valve which doesn't, which stops liquid from going backwards. You have a shutdown here, and then this is a level control valve, and they all flow to the surge heat exchanger. Now the surge heat exchanger is the next page here, which is this. And if you follow the lines, mainly just follow the page numbers and the line numbers this is page 22002 this is 001 the next 22001 and then there's 22002 and what's the line number 026 okay yeah mm, it's not showing much maybe the it needs some correction but that's where the flow comes in from to so the surge heat exchanger from page 22 and um, yeah, you shows that you have various trains, but we only look at one train because every other train is going to be identical. It's just the tax that would be different. And then it, there are two heat exchangers here. Both are op in operation, both work 50 by 50, I believe. Okay, duty, design, operating, operating pressure, operating temperature. So the flow comes in this way. It's split into two one goes upwards one goes downwards and it flows um through of course these are valves isolation valves so you can isolate this and um, work on the equipment in here this is your heat exchanger you always remember that there's some flow coming in from the other side which is the heating medium and then this is what you're actually heating and then there's a pressure gauge here to know the pressure in the line you can come and look at it locally and there's a transmitter here and this what this transmitter does is if this line the pressure is too much it would tell this to open up this is a pressure control valve it would open up and if the pressure is too low it would indicate to this and tell this to close it down and then you have the flow going all the way here 
and um, it goes to the surge vessel. The surge vessel is also another line of defense for the liquids. If you get um, very high liquids, your surge vessels are always very gigantic to handle whatever excess flow you have in the lines. So I don't want to make the video too long. Thank you very much. There's just a couple pages left. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Um, if you have any comments, any suggestions, please let me know. I would um, treat them. And uh, yeah, thank you. Like, subscribe. And um, yeah, I would uh, see you in the next video. Thank you. My name is Sean Toby, promoting safety engineering. And do have a lovely day. Bye-bye.